and laughing happily, Sunday school has just ended as the smell of freshly poured coffee fills the air. I make sure my dad is distracted as I sneak a donut from the inviting white box on the table by the kitchen. My mom catches me in frowns of disappointment. I eat it anyway. The choir members begin to gather and organize their folders. I swallow the rest of my donut and walk over to where the choir director is standing, all four feet and ten inches of beautiful Latina fire and sass talking to another choir director. <laughs> she is wearing a modestly dressed that hugs her petite frame and a matching jacket. She removes her jacket and turns her back to me to reveal a partially undone zipper at the top of her dress. She asks me if I will zip it up for her, and I smile and say, yes? <laughs> I carefully move her hair out of the way as I begin to feel the blood rush to my face and start to feel an odd warmth between my legs. Ooh. My stomach flips like when you go over the drop on a roller coaster, and I can feel my heart beating in my ears. My once small and nimble fingers become gigantic and fumbling as I desperately try to grasp the zipper. Hurry up, Danielle. I have things to do. Sorry, my fingers are too big and I can't grab a zipper. Praying that my panic tone doesn't give me away. My mind races. Why is this taking so long? Do my cheeks look as red as they feel? It's just a fucking zipper. Why can't I get my fingers to work? <laughs> Finally, after what seems like hours, I zip up her dress and fasten the hook. I try not to make eye contact with anyone while I try and calm myself down. I'm 16. I shouldn't be feeling this way. Being gay is wrong. Her name is Allison, the woman who has rendered my once capable fingers almost useless. She's outspoken, hilarious, and so fucking hot. <laughs> Chocolate brown eyes that can see straight through me in full red lips that I love to watch flush with color as she puts on her lipstick. She is also married and the daughter of a pastor. <laughs> it wasn't just about being physically attracted to her. It was that I could go to her with whatever crisis my 16-year-old brain could invent and she would listen without judgment or condescension. She made me want to be better. This yearning for Allison's affection and approval completely flies in the face of what I've been taught. So-called good Christian girls are told to act good Christian girls are to be glowing examples of God's pure love by abstaining from sex before finding and marrying good Christian guys. Emphasis on the word guy, as in male. Being attracted to women was okay, but not the act. I could come clean about Allison and about being attracted to women in general, but it would mean surrendering the chance of ever being in a relationship. Celibacy. Can I really live like that? Do people live like that? I can't say anything. Mom is a Sunday school teacher. What would people think? So, being the good Christian girl that I was, I buried how I felt about Allison. I buried it so well, I would be 25 before I would have to face the question I spent so much time and energy running from. Are you a lesbian? My mom asked, lowering her voice so the other patrons in the crazy <coughs> Mexican restaurant don't hear. <coughs> There it is, the question I had been so desperately avoiding. We are still waiting for her carne asada burrito and my chicken fajitas. I stare at my soda and watch a bead of conversation <coughs> trickle down the glass landing on the table. No, no, trust me, I like boys. It's a lie, and it feels as if there's a voice in my head screaming as I answer her. She knows. I've been so careful. How could she have figured it out? I pretended to drool over shirtless, Guys with dimpled smiles in the Cosmo, vague excitement in its shape, brooding Channing Tatum and Dear John. Wasn't that enough? Is she disappointed? Would she still love me? Would she think I'm failing her? Are you sure? It's okay if you are. I just need you to tell me, she continues, softening her voice after seeing how uncomfortable I am. I stare at the bright blue ceviche poster on the wall behind her. Not ready to match her gaze. As my gaze moves to the salsa bar by the front counter, I wish that my dad was here. He died six years ago when I was 19. I can almost hear him making a silly joke, trying to get me to smile. <coughs> he always knew how to calm my fears. Like when I was four and we went to the beach. I was too afraid to go in the water past my knees. So he held my hand and promised that we wouldn't let go as we jump over the waves. His voice echoes in my ears as I open my mouth to speak. 
I'm sure, Mom. I like boys. I promise. I lie again, hoping she'll take the bait and change the subject. The guilt from lying to her is still gnawing at me when we leave the restaurant and walk back to the car, draped in the telly silence. On the car ride home, my mind drifts back five years to age 20. My boyfriend and I realize that despite our best efforts, our relationship just wasn't working. I feel like a trophy, like I'm something to flaunt when you need attention, he once said as we walked down the grassy hill at the park before the candy-colored plastic playground. In my head, I see flashes. Memories of the two of us, killing time by moving out while we were waiting for the movie theater to open, all while ignoring other theater doors. Kissing him was complicated. I always felt like I was waiting for the show to turn the same kind of somersaults it did whenever I was close to Allison. Really? That's not how I see you at all. My eyebrows raised in concern. We were in the midst, midst of a rough patch in our relationship, not really going anywhere past arguing, and despite the good girl's decree of abstinence, a one-sided sexual, sexual relationship weighed down my guilt and obligation. Usually when we would have sex, which we justified by agreeing that no one would ever know, everything would start out okay, bodies responding, hands exploring. But somewhere along the line it would stop working. My body would tense up so much that it hurt, forcing me to stop them. In those moments, I found myself wondering if it would feel the same way with a woman. Maybe we should think about spending time apart, he says. I stare at the sand under my feet as I sit on a swing and try to process what he said. Although it feels as if my good girl fairy tale of a loving husband, two kids, and a white picket fence is slipping away, I'm not as disappointed or hurt as I thought I would be. When I leave him on a rainy morning in May of that year, a strange feeling that I'm not expecting passes over me. I'm free. Back in the car, I drift out of my reverie as mom pulls into the driveway. Maybe my boyfriend was right. Maybe I did treat him as something to flaunt when I needed attention. Not so much a trophy, but walking, talking, evidence that I was normal and I wasn't a lesbian. I silently decide right then to stop bearing this dark secret that I've been carrying around for so long. The resolve of this decision stays with me as I reconnect with another choir director that I met the same year as Allison. Like Allison, this choir director had a similar petite build and the same lack of judgment and condescension. She has blonde hair to Allison's brown and full blue eyes that sparkle when she smiles. On a sunny September afternoon, I watch her as she makes notes on her seemingly endless to-do list at the end of rehearsal. I wrap up a microphone cable, building up my nerve, while I wait for the last of the choir, other choir members to leave. When I hear the door of the choir room close, I walk over to her and place the cable in the back with the others. Did I ever tell you that my mom asked me if I was gay? I asked quietly, trying to sound nonchalant. I stare at the legs of the chairs on the risers, trying to steady my mind. No, you didn't mention that. She answers, looking up and putting the microphones away. I take a deep breath and prepare for what's coming. Well, she did, and what's worse, I lied to her when I said I was straight. I confess as I stare at the piano in the corner of the room, unable to match her gaze. An awkward silence passes between us as she absorbs what I've said. My eyes dart back to meet hers as, I, as her gaze softens, and she takes my shaking hand in her own. There's no shame in being gay or bi, she says as she squeezes my hand. As she says this, I close my eyes and let go of the breath I didn't know I was holding. I expected her to be supportive, but it was like this was the first time these words really sunk in. There was something about opening up in that room, the choir room, much like the room where I first zipped up Allison's dress. In the years since that fateful Sunday morning, Allison had moved away and out of my life. And through this new choir director, it's like I can finally work through the fear and confusion that 16-year-old me buried. Three weeks later, inspired and strengthened by coming out to my choir director, I mustered up the courage to write a coming out letter to my mom. I wait in the car, trying to remind myself to breathe as she reads it, still dressed in her work clothes. Are you in a relationship? She asks quietly as she gets in the car. Unable to find my voice, I shake my head now. Well, I'm glad you told me, she continues starting the car. We're on our way to the night class we're taking together. 
We spent several minutes passing familiar houses close to the painful silence before I'd be able to speak. Are you okay? I asked. My voice feels so small. I, I don't know what to say. I really wish your dad was here, she says, her voice shaking as she starts to cry. I wish I could talk to him so much. I don't know how to do this alone, she continues. Daddy. Hearing her bring him up makes my heart hurt. I wonder what he would think about all of this. My mom's voice snaps me out of my daydream. I'll always love you. Nothing can change that, she says, calming down and wiping her tears at a stoplight. I close my eyes as she says this, and with the next breath, I let go of the fear that I held onto so tightly. In the time since, I've, I've learned that I'll never be a failure as a daughter, and that there's no such thing as being a good Christian girl.